Zero to Geek. Learning better is better. Welcome geeks and welcome to our chapter 8 review of my book HTML5 Graphing and Data Visualization Cookbook. I'm Ben Fallon, your host and the guy that wrote the book. If you don't have it yet, please buy it and join us in. We're already in chapter 8 talking about what will you learn in the chapter itself. If it looks like I'm sweating, it's because I am. There's a lot of light bulbs in my face right now to try to make sure that we could do this green screen effect. So, apologize in advance if I do a lot of these. Because I didn't figure out how to put air in the room without it making more noise than we need. But, getting better at it. Alright, so, let's jump right in. So, Chapter 8, playing with Google Charts, and really this is the first po point where we start delving deeper into one specific system. And in this first uh, chapter that is about Google and working with Google, we're going to explore a lot of features of the Google Charts and the Google API in general. Now, what among the stuff that we're going to cover in Chapter 8 are going to be um, getting started with a pie chart, so we'll see how to create a chart, we'll pick a simple one, a pie chart, do a few modifications to, to see how it works. We'll then move on to creating a chart wrapper and see how chart wrappers work, what they are, what are they for, and what are they good for. And then we'll move on to changing our data source to a Google spreadsheet, which is kind of cool. So you could actually have a Google spreadsheet as your source for your chart or your data in general. Our next step is going to be we're going to customize the chart properties with the options object. We're going to explore the options object so you understand it and know how to customize any chart in Google Charts. Um, the API is very simple to follow once you finish this chapter and we add a dashboard to our charts. We more or less covered the core functionalities of Google Charts and with it you should be able to use any chart in the Google API. Now. The reason why I picked Google, the Google API is mainly because we are leaning towards, we already picked what we want to play with the Google Maps in later, in later chapters, and because of that, whew, I'm hot, and because of that, we are going uh, to start exploring with Google Charts, and Google Charts is a very fantastic and useful tool, especially if you're already using a lot of other Google products, because obviously, um, then you're getting all your sources, all your files, all your things from the same main host, and Google loves it when you use their stuff in general. All right, so let's um, see a few of the samples, and again, if you don't know where you are and you're watching this on YouTube, you could find our book page on zero to geekcom Just click on the Books tab and then search for the book HTML Graphing and Data Visualization Cookbook. Um, by the way, what this is is all the books that come in the book sections are books that our books that our support team supports, aka any book that's in the list of our books, if you're a subscribed member on Zero to Geek, you can get support from us. If you want to do something and you build some application that's based off of it and you want to take a peek at it, we'll take a peek at it. Um, and beyond the over 110 hours of training on our site, um, access to all these books and support from our team when you don't understand something in the book, we'll actually open up the book, the page that you're having trouble with and try to figure out a way to explain it to you in an easier way if you get stuck. But that's only for our subscribed members. Whoever isn't a paying member of our site, please join us at least at YouTube where you'll get weekly updates and videos about cool stuff that we're following. You could get the book as well by clicking on the buy from Amazon and just work with us and don't pay. We're, we're fine with that. Well, just buy the book. We're fine with that. Even don't buy the book, unfortunately. I'm also fine with that. But please at least buy the book if you're following our videos. That's the least you could do. All right, so let's see some of the things that we're going to build in this example. So the first one is going to be a 3D-ish kind of style chart that has a rollover with all the information. It's based on a chart from 2008 of the the reason why people die, the 15 top reasons why people die. Um, we then will take the same information and and just switch the graph using that graph, that chart wrapper, and explain how that works. Um, we're then going to continue on by... Um, I don't remember really what this one was about. I think this our point of this one was that this one that came from an external source. And this one is, well, building a candlestick chart, which we'll be building in the example. And last but not least is going to be adding dashboards, which dashboards basically enable you to customize and change things on the fly. So, for example, we only want to zoom in to ages 33 to 63 to see how many people die in those age groups in 2008 in the United States. And that covers... Um, the samples that, you're, that we're going to explore in this chapter. 
So let's talk about what you would actually do after you read the chapter. So one is I do encourage you to get familiar with Google Charts. I believe that after chapter 8 you will be. So just pick any chart and build something out of a different data source. Pick whatever data source you want. Pick whatever chart you want and try to see if you could create all those functionalities that we cover in this chapter. And that's really the most simple task that you could do. Um, and one that will give you the most knowledge of how to work inside of Google with Google Charts. With that said, with Google Charts you're not allowed to change their API itself. You could do whatever you want on your end, but you don't really have access directly to the source of the API because you're actually doing um, API calls to the server itself, the Google server itself, to get the information. With that said, that covers our video for today, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in Chapter 9 and 10, where we'll continue exploring other Google features, which will get cooler and cooler as we progress towards the end of this book. If you're looking for the subscribe button, you'll find it on the top left corner. Zero to be. Learning better is better.